Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can sharpen an image in Photoshop using Adobe Camera Raw to do it, but you're going to do it from inside Photoshop. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at sharpening from inside Photoshop CC and we're going to do it using the Adobe Camera Raw filter because one of the features of this Adobe Camera Raw filter in the sharpening area is that you can mask your sharpening and that allows you to apply sharpening to only the areas of the image that actually really need sharpening which is the edges leaving the rest of the image unsharpened. Now one of the problems with Photoshop traditionally has been that its sharpening features are poor and that is in particular in contrast to what is available for example inside Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. But with Photoshop CC we now have the ability to take an image out to the Adobe Camera Raw interface to do our work. So we're going to see how to do that and sharpen this image. Before I do so I will typically select to create a smart object of this image. So I'm going to choose filter and then convert for smart filters. And this is going to convert the image into a smart object. Once that is complete, I'm now going to take this image out to the new Adobe Camera Raw filter by choosing filter and then camera raw filter. And what this is going to do is open Adobe Camera Raw inside Photoshop with my image already open and ready for working on. Now we're going to look at sharpening so we're going to look at the detail tab here so I'm going to click on it. Now as you can with Lightroom you should hold the Alt key down as you drag on these sliders. When you do that on the amount slider what you're seeing is the sharpening applied to the luminosity because that's another feature of sharpening inside Adobe Camera Raw and in Lightroom is that sharpening is only applied to the luminosity or the black and white in the image not to the color. So I'm going to set my sharpening value at quite a high value and then I'm going on to select these other options. I'll come back to amount in a minute. When I hold the Alt key as I drag on radius, I'm being shown the halos in the image. Now this image was not sharp out of the camera. So I'm going to have to wind the radius up to quite a high value to sharpen this image. So I'm going to take it up to probably around 2 or 2.2 for this image simply because it wasn't sharp. And then with the detail slider, again, I'm going to hold the Alt key as I drag on it. And typically when you apply a high radius value, you want a fairly low value for detail. These two tend to work opposite each other. So if you're using a low radius, for example, on an already very sharp image, then you'll typically add a slightly higher value for detail. So I've got my radius and my detail in position. Now I'm going to hold the Alt key as I drag on masking. This is a setting that we don't have in Photoshop. We cannot mask our sharpening and it really is a way more sophisticated way to sharpen an image because when you drag on this masking slider anything that is colored white is going to be sharpened. And so if I drag across to the right you'll see that the edges in the image are staying white but the areas of flat color are becoming black. In other words, the sharpening is only going to be applied to the edges in the image. Now this is a twofold benefit. The first thing is, is that we're only applying the sharpening to the edges in the image, which is the only area that we want to sharpen. So we're not going to sharpen areas of flat color. In particular, this would be skies or areas of flat paintwork. But it also allows us to apply a higher level of sharpening to the image because we're not sharpening areas of flat color or areas of noise. So we're able to sharpen a lot more aggressively than we would have been able to do inside Photoshop because the sharpening is only being applied to the white areas in the image and the areas of flat color in the umbrella for example and the building behind they're not being sharpened anyway. 
So once we've applied our sharpening to the image, we can just click OK and we'll be taken back into Photoshop and the sharpening effect has been applied to the image. And of course we've got a mask here that we could further mask out sharpening in areas if we didn't want that to occur. So I think if you're using Photoshop CC, you're going to really benefit from having the ability to use Adobe Camera Raw's sharpening engine from inside Photoshop. Just be aware, of course, that you're going to have to be working on a flattened version of the image or a version of the image that's been created for smart filters because sharpening is something that you'll apply to the image just before you're ready to print it and you want to do that to all the data in the image. And then use the masking facility in Adobe Camera Raw just to mask the sharpening to only those areas of the image that you actually want to sharpen, in other words, the edge detail. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel. You'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.